Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. If you can see and hear me and Rupam correctly, just put a hi in the chat box. Hey, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. If you can see us clearly, put a hi in the chat box. Okay, thanks a lot, Paratosh, for validating that. And uh, welcome all of you to another Power Packed Insights with Upgrad series. Uh, this time we have a very special guest uh, kickstarting the series for us. Uh, we usually prefer data science over, over machine learning to kickstart our series, but this time we have, because a lot of you had shown a lot more interest in machine learning, we have, uh, we have Rupam today kicking off this event uh, with a super interesting topic, which I am sure all of you will uh, really like. And uh, this entire bit will be picking up various examples from various industries. So I think that's something you all definitely will learn a lot from. Uh, before we start, uh, before I let the stage, uh, Rupam take the stage, I will just very quickly try to understand uh, a little bit about what your expectations are from today's session and uh, what, your, what range of your work experience are you falling under? Because that will help Rupam understand how basic or, or how advanced he needs to take this session. Okay, very less people have voted so far. Quickly, there's just two buttons that you need to press. Request all of you to very quickly click this. Okay, Rupam, I hope you can see the live results that are coming in. Yes, I can. Thanks, Mega. Okay, okay. About 50% of you have voted. Really waiting for all of you to vote in. Uh, until then, let me quickly tell you the rules for the session. There's just two rules. If you have any issues with audio, video quality, uh, just put it in the chat box. Uh, do use the Q&A box for any questions you want Rupam to pick up because there's a lot of time dedicated to Q&A that are coming from you. So do use the Q&A box for any questions you want Rupam to pick up. Okay, uh, I would, about 60% of you have voted so far. So uh, from the looks of it, I think we have a very balanced audience today. Uh, Rupam, right from zero to two to 15 plus years. So I think you can go, the, the, the world is, is your ocean right now to, uh, in terms of examples. I think a lot of them are very interested in understanding how they can build a career in machine learning and AI. So uh, I think that's good feedback for you to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, um, Medha. Over to you. Thanks. So let me just share my screen. Like, uh, tell me once you can see the screen. <clears throat> Is it on? Yep, I can see okay, it. Great. So I'm just looking at the poll one last time. Yes, so we have a, uh, you, know, you were saying balance audience, it seems like they are on the extreme, like either like two plus year or 15 plus. So great, like, I mean, we have a very diverse audience, which is always good to have because you will have very diverse question and which is something which uh, I find interesting. And I'm sure like all of you will uh, learn a lot from that. Uh, why are you, uh, what, what kind of outcome you're looking for? Uh, most of you are saying understanding, understand whether I can build my career in AI and dash 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 which is machine learning, I'm guessing. Uh, uh, then how is machine learning shaping the industry? Yes. Great. So uh, let's let's get started and uh, let's let me just quickly introduce what we have in plans. Uh, should I end the poll or how how does? Yeah, yeah. you okay. can continue. I will continue. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And share results maybe we can we can have a full screen from you mm -hmm. so that yep yeah, that'll help it yes uh, so do feel free to uh, keep posting your questions as Meda mentioned like uh, that'll really help us like kind of uh, uh, slow down or speed up things uh, as required and also like uh, maybe some things uh, which you feel are appropriate to ask at that time should uh, keep it extremely interactive 
uh, quickly, this is what we are trying to cover today. Like, I mean, uh, machine learning products and solutions. Medha mentioned that like uh, she likes to start with data science and like uh, I think these are all words <laughs> like data science, machine learning. At the end of the day, you do them all, and essentially you don't do them. You try to answer questions. Like at the uh, if if you like, I mean, this is something that I'm doing for uh, twenty years. A, a quick introduction about. Uh, uh, like, uh, let me just quickly introduce myself. Like, uh, what I, uh, I I'm doing, say, data science, machine learning, whatever you call it, for last twenty years. Uh, at that time, the name was not there, so it seems like I mean, we all started our career and in, uh, uh, in uh, playing around with data, having fun, and then slowly these uh, names started popping in, like uh, uh, data science. If I believe, like, I mean, somewhere around like. Uh, 2010, 2008, 2008, that's the period when uh, this word kind of took over and uh, now it's uh, very popular. Like machine learning is being around because it's a field of computer science, uh, which uh, like maybe Alan Turing was trying to crack as well in his days. And it's, it's, it's something which is very exciting for us because we're trying to understand how our brain works. So if you think like machine learning, then you say human learning, human brain, machines, like how, how is like our entire uh, say thought process work? And that's what you're trying to capture through say mathematics or other uh, form of uh, languages that we know. So let's move further what uh, towards the agenda of uh, our meeting. And uh, so these are the four things like uh, in academics, you have to create these uh, say uh, classification when you go to industry as i do like i mean it kind of all comes together so there's hardly uh, like i mean uh, a place where you say okay like this is machine learning this is statistic this is like you just try to solve the problem and that's one thing which i want all of you to take back uh, that when you will start your career uh, it's all about not like your skills with python not your skills with r or whatever whatever that you feel uh, you think are important it's about like going back to industry and solving the problems that exist and uh, giving results uh, so how do you give results how do you produce results uh, these are like four uh, say uh, pivots you can call them you can call them four pillars of uh, uh, way things are done in industry. So one is platform. Uh, and I'll tell you what platform means, like, I mean, as we we'll move further, uh, then there are products. So you develop products, you develop uh, machine learning products, you develop data products, you develop, uh, uh, say, AI products. Uh, then there is solution. So we'll spend a lot of time on products and solution, uh, but we will also cover platform and accelerators to a certain extent. Uh, so, let me take a quick, quick uh, poll. Like, I mean, since the audience is so uh, diverse and so coming from such uh, diverse background, uh, where do you think, like, I mean, when you start your career uh, and since you're all interested in like starting your career or maybe you're already there, but uh, still trying to understand, okay, what all things I can do in machine learning and data science. So when you start your career, where do you think like most of the activities will be? Will it be on the product side or on solution side? And this will also kind of give me an insight whether you understand what I mean by product and solution. So if you could possibly uh, start writing in the chat box, that's okay. So when you start your career, like whether it will be whether you'll be developing machine learning products. Okay, so you're interested, like I got the first answer, which says products is where uh, solutions, okay, products. Solutions, product. Okay, so I'm seeing like 50-50 divide, like, I mean, when you will start your career, uh, and let me kind of modify the question. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. Uh, when you start your career, what will most of the work that data scientists do? Do they develop products or do they develop solutions? Solutions. Now, okay, so now I'm seeing like a develop solutions. Okay, so that's that's how it works. Like, I mean, usually you go, you go to a bank, you go to a 
uh, say telecom company, you go to a retail like Amazon and various other e-com companies, uh, you, you go to a manufacturing. So it's essentially everywhere. And usually it's a very niche problem that people are trying to solve. So these are problems say like in a bank, you will say uh, who is going to be in future a good borrower. So if I'll give your money to you, whether you will repay or not. So that's a question that people are asking in banking. Similarly, in manufacturing, you're asking whether you're, when you're running a machine, whether it will break down at some point or not. And if it is going to break down, how to do predictive maintenance and various such things. So that's what is happening in manufacturing. Healthcare, uh, which is a, 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 like another important area where what happens is you try to answer questions such as if a patient is there, what, are, what is their likelihood to develop a severe disease? So if they are like, say, a COVID patient, like, I mean, this is something that we are all going through and I'm guessing like all of us are still recovering from what the world has gone through in the last year and a half uh, from COVID. Uh, if you see, if you take a sample of say uh, 100 patients, can you recognize while they are in the mild stage of COVID, which one of them is kind of going to migrate to a, a severe, disease and severe disease is typically uh, uh, defined as somebody with who will need hospitalization, maybe needs uh, uh, ICU uh, respiratory work like very like artificially respiratory uh, functioning has to be required for them or those kind of things. Uh, so uh, again, you're asking questions like this is my current state, what is going to happen in the future? And if I can understand what's that what that thing is going to happen. Can I take an intervention to, if it's a bad adverse event, uh, can I prevent that? So these are the solutions because these are all problems that are very different in nature. These are uh, problems that are uh, uh, say requires a lot of thinking, a lot of like say creativity and creativity is an important word in data science. So these are all solutions. Uh, let's come to product. What do we mean by product? Products are typically say, uh, when you do your Google, uh, so all of you are using your smartphones, and when you're talking to your Alexa or Google, uh, that uh, voice thing, uh, that's a machine learning or AI product, where uh, it's a product which something that Google has built can be taken to a chat box and still function fine. So product is something that is not specific to that problem, but can be applied to multiple places. That's that's what like a, one kind of product will be. Another kind will be, okay, a specific to industry, but it's still applicable for uh, all the same manufacturing company. Uh, so that is another product that one could look at. So quickly, let's go through all these three definitions uh, or four things that we have in front of us and try to understand them better. Uh, and do feel free to keep asking questions if I'm like uh, some of the things, places you need some explanation. So platforms, the first thing that we were looking at that like person on the uh, swimming pool platform jumping off. So platform is essentially tools. That's how I look at them. Uh, these are, when you are a mathematician, you do use calculators. Uh, these are much, much powerful calculators. And that's how you want to look at them. So when you are a data scientist or when you are a, a problem solver, uh, you don't want to give too much weightage to your platform. You know that this platform is there to help you in terms of doing your calculation, but that's where the role of platform kind of gets over. Uh, and there's, I'm seeing like off late, like people who are starting their career recently in data science, uh, they think that learning Python or learning R will solve all their problem. And that's essentially like just learning calculator. So when you know how to use calculator, unless you know the mathematics behind it, unless you know what are you trying to, what problem you're trying to solve, calculator is not going to come very useful. And that applies to all these platforms that you're seeing in front of you. Azure machine learning is one of them. Google Collabs, I use it a lot. Uh, Keras, TensorFlow, uh, Amazon machine learning. So all these like, I mean, different uh, tools that are available, uh, but, treat your tools like how doctors will treat their stethoscope. So they are still trying to diagnose a disease. They are trying to solve a problem. Uh, using a stethoscope is not going to like uh, make you a doctor. Uh, so next, once you are kind of like know what the platforms are, let's move further. Uh, products. So let's look at some of the products that are around. I was talking about Google Translate. 
So Google Translate is essentially right now, if I'm talking in English, uh, it will do a translation in some other language. I have used it and it's it's a lifesaver, trust me. So I was in China and uh, uh, it's really hard to, and Google is not available by the way in China. So still like Google Translate works. Uh, and uh, there were these uh, presentations in which they were projecting these uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation all in Chinese. So you can take your camera right next to it and you put it there uh, and start this Google uh, Translate version of like uh, like text to uh, language translation. So that like, I mean, uh, the presentation was in Chinese and then immediately converts it back to English. And that's kind of phenomenal. Uh, it's a lifesaver when you are in a foreign country, you don't understand their language and uh, can still search and can still make out what's going on. So that's like one of the product. The product way, like as you could say, this particular product can be used in multiple settings. It's not like, okay, like, I mean, you can just use it in for one purpose. There are multiple settings. You can just take this product, kind of modify it, and then it's ready to use for the next place. Autonomous car, again, whether you're driving your car in uh, United States or Britain or India, uh, the same principle works. Okay, like some level of chaos can go up and down, but overall, like uh, the same idea, same uh, lidar on the other sensors that are there in the autonomous car will still work. So that's a product. Medical imaging is another example of a product where I believe, and it's not I believe, it's like a, it's a fact that a uh, lot of these. Uh, so there used to be there is a field called uh, uh, where people like I mean take these MRI images and then the doctors will see them uh, what what the recent re research suggests is that the medical images like that which is computers looking at the uh, mri are better at diagnosing the disease than what doctors would do so that's the level of uh, uh, place where machines have reached where machines are kind of like better than humans and that's not the only place like i mean you've seen like AlphaGo chess like few years ago like that uh, deep blue uh, Casper versus so many places machines are doing better than humans but does not mean that they are going to overtake humans like I mean the, it's like a uh, system where like I mean we both these things coexist so that's the world which I see alternate automated surveillance another thing like people are looking at through cameras and they're seeing okay look whether somebody is wearing a mask or not this product can be used in China can be used in India can be used in anywhere else so again uh, it's a product because it can be taken from one place to another and without much problem. Spam detector, again, like you can use a spam detector in Gmail, Yahoo Mail, everywhere, even your personal mails, like, I mean, it's, it will do a similar job because it's a product which is which can be taken from one place to another. What are solutions? Solutions are kind of more specific. And... Uh, one thing I'll tell you, like, I mean, so I was giving you example of, uh, say, credit scoring. Credit scoring where uh, for a one bank, if you see, you have developed a scorecard and you take it and they apply it to a completely different bank, you'll find that it will not perform as well, despite the industry is the same, uh, because there are nuances about customer profiling. So the kind of profile that you're looking from this scorecard may be a completely different profile from the other scorecard. So there are like very, uh, very uh, say subtle nuances that exist that will make a solution kind of needs to be tweaked majorly, unlike the products, which you can kind of like do a small uh, uh, changes and it's ready to be used in other places. Solution may not be as uh, uh, say easy to migrate from one place to another. Uh, despite that, if you are going to become a data scientist or a machine learning engineer or anything related to that, uh, the chances is that most of you are going to work on solutions, not on products. Uh, and I find working on solutions is e like, I mean, possibly more creative. Like, I mean, at times, like it's uh, about looking at a problem, solving it, like it's less about technology. It's more about uh, your say creativity. It's more about your way of looking at uh, things so that way like I mean of doing solutions is equally fun uh, things to do and most of the data scientists are involved in uh, these kind of activities where are they doing their work like retail of course we talked about it Amazon when you look at 
recommender engine it tells you okay you want you, when you look for a phone it tells you hey you know what like you this phone is what you're looking for but maybe you will be interested in that and uh, some independent sources have done some research on it they think that like almost 40 percent 35 to 40 percent of amazon revenue comes from that recommender engine which you see at the bottom of the page so your main product what you are looking for is over here and it says like these are the other products that you might be interested in and most people end up buying what's in here like rather than the main products so almost 35 40 percent for it's such a giant like amazon that's a big deal so it's all machine learning again uh banking what kind of solution credit scoring is what i talked about we'll look at uh, this problem again uh, manufacturing predictive maintenance entertainment what movie to watch uh, entertainment some of the things can be also productized as well uh, but again like uh, it, it's also a solution based supply chain big area supply chain is like a big uh, area of uh, say improvement which this is where like all the bottlenecks are how to improve supply chain climate is another area which is like becoming climate change is something which is going to impact all of us uh, that's another area where a lot of data is being used now. <clears throat> Insurance. Uh, so essentially every industry that you can think of. So there are like I, I noticed uh, when we were asking you uh, what's the experience level of experience that you have and you gave the whole list of so from less than two years to 15 years all of you were around and that's where I thought uh, when you are coming from such diverse experience uh, one thing that you want to take back is that whichever industry you're coming from, you will be apply, able to apply these ideas and you will be able to make a career in that industry. So you don't need to move around. Uh, I was lucky because like I started it very early. I was like almost, uh, uh, say like 20 years ago as I was introducing myself uh, because I got lucky as I started this thing early, like there were fewer people doing it. I got the chance to work in all multiple industries. So I've worked in banking, I've worked in manufacturing, I'm doing consulting for a, a restaurant chain, I'm doing retail, I've done retail related work, insurance, healthcare, uh, supply chain. So essentially like a lot of fields I got to explore, uh, but now things are like becoming much more ultra focused. So even a specific industry is where uh, a lot of focus is going. So whichever industry you're coming from, uh, there's already work going on, so uh, there's need for people, there's need for good people to who could do uh, data science or machine learning. So I think there's it's a good career to choose. Now let's let's uh, let me pause for a while. Like I mean, and I'll take some questions if you have some questions before we jump into uh, creating a looking at a case study from both product as well as solution side of the world. Like how you analyze data to create products, how you analyze data to create, say, a solution. And uh, then see that there's not too much difference. I mean, there's, there's no hardly like a, a difference between these two things. They, both of them come together. And we'll also try to create distinction between them. Like, okay, what, what all, uh, things uh, we can do. So these are the two examples which I'm going to look at from the product side, as well as uh, from uh, uh, the from uh, solution point of view. So this is like where I'll kind of take a quick break and like I've seen some questions or uh, Meda, if you can help me with the questions, if I, because there's something popping out. Do we have some questions right now? So how to, so, yes. Uh, I think one of the questions is from an anonymous attendee, which is, can you please tell us on the two to three real projects you're working on using ML? What's mm -hmm. the team size like? What are the timelines like? Do you want to pick that up now or you want to keep that, park that for later? Okay. So maybe uh, like that's, a, that's not related to what we were discussing. So maybe right. we'll keep it so for later. So let's uh, take the one which Dhamraj Ji has asked, how to develop a product? How to develop a product? Uh, so as I was telling you, 
first thing when you look for a development of a product is how because product development is a long cycle solution is very specific to that problem when you're looking at product like i mean you want to see that it has application in multiple areas so something like say a google translate how did they develop this product now the problem is clear the problem statement is around for longest time like I mean, everybody knew that uh, there is a need like we usually travel with uh, uh, interpreters uh, so uh, like i mean whenever i go to all these uh, countries where i can't speak their language there are always these interpreters who will help us do the communication uh, can we think of a can we think of a algorithm which can do this translation in real time so the problem statement was around uh, then what they did is they kind of started looking at this problem statement and it did not they didn't solve it in a day or like i mean a three months period or a six months period which is typically what the solution time frame looks like so typically you want to deliver a solution so that it will start giving uh, generating revenue for the company or reducing cost for the company because these are the solutions within a specific time frame so three months six months so product life cycle is a very long cycle uh, and that's where uh, what is required how do you build a product you start with a problem statement same as solution uh, but product is a iterative process so product development is an iterative process where like when you start with something uh, it will do uh, like i mean uh, it, it's 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 uh, it will go like in multiple directions and then things will start coming together so i'll give you an example when we'll look at the uh, case study that i'm going to show you uh but uh, when you're looking at a product development versus solution the big difference is uh, solution uh client or the users want the results much faster so three months six months that's the kind of horizon that you're looking at product development is a long time frame cycle uh, which requires finally your users need to uh, use it and that's where like i mean having a very close eye unlike the solution where you are working directly with the user product you are like kind of thinking of the user what their requirements will be and imagining this user at times to satisfy their problem so that's one of the things which uh, you see as a product versus solution a lot of times like what also happens is these solutions when they are repeatable they become a product so that's another cycle which you go through so you work with one client you have identified something you work with another client you have identified like something multiple clients and then all these ideas kind of come together maybe over a period of time so these are the two uh, product development cycles that i can suggest any other question before we move on So let's let's take all the other question maybe towards the end if it's not related to product and solutions. I'm I'm not very sure if this one qualifies. Uh, Bashar is asking who to merchandise the added value of a solution and obtain the fund for for the the target value is not clear yet. Who to merchandise the added value of solution? So solution tar target audience is very clear. you built for a very specific problem so there's no uh, like it's essentially like a say a company that you are working with sorry how to merchandise mm -hmm. okay would request all of you to just be very articulate in putting your questions because then uh, it sort of confuses the speaker as well let me pick up another one till then uh shweta is asking as data science is a multidisciplinary stream how challenging is it to transit from non it to this domain okay i think even this can be picked up later mm -hmm. uh and uh, all of you just put your questions in the uh in the q and a box and on the chat box did you get bashar's question rupa not sure like uh, so i'm guessing that what you're asking is how to for product like is this a question related to product or solution this looks like it's related to solution okay so so in, in terms of solution is very clear so solution i'll tell you like in solution uh, the way it works is uh, 
I'll give you an example. So if I'm working with a bank, I'll go to them and I say, okay, like, I mean, uh, maybe you're like, I mean, so you know what all like, I mean, so at the end of the day, you look at the uh, uh, income statement of any company. And that's how you start with any solution in any company. So the idea is how are you going to create an impact on any side of this income statement or PNL? So either you can help the uh, organization with the revenue side, which is improving the revenue. Uh, so at a lower cost, you generate higher revenue or like, I mean, even not even that, like, I mean, bringing in more customers. So creating demand. So that's the revenue side of the cycle. Then the cost side is like, I mean, there are multiple side items. So whenever you're looking at a solution, the idea is to go through this, uh, where are you going to create the impact and communicate that impact. And that's a typical cycle of like, say, selling a consulting project or a solution. It, it's, it's essentially the same. So it's not very different, like from what say, uh, McKinsey's of the world were doing uh, many years ago. And now, like, I mean, a lot of those roles are being taken over by data scientists and uh, say machine learning engineers. I hope that answers your question. Shall we consider the solution okay. is customized? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I was about to read that. Okay, you go ahead. Yeah. Medha, like, yeah. shall we take all these questions maybe towards the end like before that let's let's have a look at let's kind of go Absolutely. through the presentation I mean, for you to for you to pace yourself i think we can have uh i think all that you wanted to cover in the session and then take take this do you want to cover this one right now shall we consider the solution as the customization of a product to fit specific market or industry mm, semantics yeah you could consider it it like that, that's also fine. So very specific problem, very niche problem you're trying to solve and you're creating a very specific product for that problem. Yes, you can consider that like, but usually like, I mean, product is something like that's used by everybody. So like, I mean, that's one definition. When we are, whenever we are using a product, say a soap or something, I mean, it's something which uh, any, most people can use it. They pick it from the shelf and it's, ready to use. So that's the definition of product. Solution is something that uh, is built. So similarly, Google Translate is a product because off the shelf, you just pick it up, you use it and it's working for you. You can do the translation on the go. Does it make sense? Or shall we move on? Yeah, I think we can move on. I'll, okay. I'll pick the remaining questions at the end. Thanks, thanks, Meeda. So. Like uh, coming back to like, I mean, where we uh, uh, kind of uh, digressed a bit or not digress, like, I mean, I was trying to answer the question, but like, I mean, if we see, we'll come back to the product and solution part. Uh, these two is something that we are defining as products. So what's a product? Like spam mail off the shelf, you take it, you put it in any email engine and it will start working like a spam detector. Uh, what has gone behind the scenes for spam detector? Let's look at that like I mean, in the next few slides. Uh, image, medical imaging. Again, I gave you an example of that COVID, uh, somebody who's a mild, somebody like I mean, a section of people is uh, in the mild uh, COVID. What, are, what is the probability that they'll become a uh, severe case maybe in the next two weeks? So that's another question that we are asking. If we just look at their vital parameters, can we predict, okay, this is what is going to happen. Medical imaging is another very uh, cool area where what happens is like I was telling you about those MRIs where like a uh, uh, machine will kind of go through the images and say, you know what, like this is, this patient has uh, this particular ailment. And just looking at the images, which sometimes doctors are missing out. So those false positive, true positive, those numbers you keep hearing about. Uh, where doctors are missing out, whether when they look at an image, they say, I, I don't think this person has any severe disease. And like, later they discover that there was a tumor or cancer or whatever, like uh, which was developing and which the doctors missed out on for various reasons. Human error, human error happens. That's when machines come in, they don't, they have a much, uh, say much uh, reduced uh, error rate, which is this false positive and false negative. And that's where like a lot of machine learning is happening. Both are products because off the shelf, you take it from one place to another, it works. Uh, 
solution again coming back a credit scoring model i want to borrow money i'll go to a bank a uh, bank a is catering to a very different kind of clientage than the bank b so you can't just pick it up and put it in this bank uh, they have they are collecting very different kind of data that's another problem so it's not like whatever this bank is collecting they have the same kind of infrastructure and data so you can't just pick it up put it over here and it will work like a typical product so both these problems may look a very different problems but they have their roots in the same uh, idea and that's what i want to kind of tell you in the next few slides so when you're looking at this spam detector medical imaging versus a good borrower versus a bad borrower uh, they may look like a different problem but they are behind the scenes machines are doing the similar kind of calculation and this kind of problem is called classification problem so classification of spam mails is it a good mail or a bad mail something that you want to read or not classification of loans is it a good good loan or a bad loan is it something something like i mean you can predict in future and you want to uh, lend money to this person or not so both kind of may look very different but at the behind the scenes same kind of machinery is at work uh, although sometimes some places you call it a product some other places you are calling it a solution so let's take an example uh, an example where uh, you are doing a classification and classification is something that we all do all the time uh, let's take an example something closer to home like a boy celebrating his birthday okay and this is this boy's birthday cake and what's happening over here on this birthday cake is uh, uh these red things that you are seeing are all cherries and the green ones are green apples now while the boy is cutting this cake there is one objective that the boy has uh one is that like i mean he's, he he likes cherries and he's not so fond of green apples so he wants to cut this cake in such a way that the piece that he's going to eat will have the maximum number of cherries and fewest number of green apples so that's one objective that he has second objective that he has is also related to sharing the cake because like i mean you are at a birthday party there are guests so he wants to take a small piece for himself and leave the rest of the piece for the guest uh, so this is the objective that he has in mind he wants most number of cherries he want to cut his cake in such a way that he gets most number of cherries and fewer green apples Uh, so again like a quick poll or uh, quick question from you uh, all of you where do you think that the boy should make his cut any suggestions you can use the chat box or q uh, like i mean chat box is possibly a better place to answer this one yeah i think just use the chat box instead mm -hmm. of the q and a for this 5 plus 2 okay this is interesting but 5 plus 2 uh, uh, how how do i read this i think he's talking of the top right corner so that's five red cherries and two green apples ah okay okay yeah. okay but uh, what i'm asking is where where to make the cut like so let's say you have the knife and you want to cut the cake two clean cuts where will you put that i think he's talking of the first quarter okay one one corner so this is the quarter that you're talking about i'm guessing yeah great so that makes sense i mean like just looking at it like i mean you did the classification which machines do all the time and machines whatever the classification they were doing spam mails good mail bad mail good borrower bad borrower uh in your case it was cherry and green apples and you kind of look at it like it's a two dimensional thing so you just made a cut which is what you suggested and makes a lot of sense and this is essentially if you run this algorithm uh, this is what you suggested cake is over here if you make a cut over here there are five cherries and two green apples so the percentage of uh, cherries is much higher on this piece of the cake and what you left for your guest has much fewer uh, cherries and more green apples so percentage terms now this same optimize this problem what you are looking at is can be solved using machine learning as well and let's look at like i mean one of the algorithms which is quite popular in machine learning is called classification and regression trees uh, and uh, this classification and regression trees 
same idea whatever you were looking at like when you were looking at the cake uh, and trying to pick cherry pick uh, this entire concept is kind of summarized into a say this form this is, this may look very complicated but it's doing the same thing what you did like you made the those cuts and you got the piece of cake with more cherries uh, so there's this formula which kind of has two components to it large piece you were looking for a large piece for yourself and you want to give a large piece to your guests as well that was the first objective second objective was or the primary objective was to pick as many cherries as possible and leave as many green apples out of the scene this entire thing is kind of made into this probability formula again may look very complicated but the idea is simple and that that's what machine learning is it's like kind of representation of our brain we are putting our brain on a piece of paper and saying that like whatever i was thinking while making that uh, cut on the cake same idea can we, can i replicate in a multiple dimension so that was a two dimensional world cake was uh, or like three dimensional but we were looking at from the top so it was a two dimensional thing can i do it in multiple dimensions say like hundreds of dimension out there and can i still find places where there is high number of cherries and fewer green apples uh, so uh that's one way to look at it like now let's try to solve the same problem for a banking that was we were talking about good borrower or bad borrower spam good mail or a bad mail and third problem which we were also looking for the like i mean again from the product perspective because uh, related to medical imaging which is uh, uh whether it's a tumor cell bad cell or a good cell something which is benevolent not nothing to worry about uh so what you do is you kind of go and collect data you have gone to a bank you kind of started collecting data for good borrowers and bad borrowers and you spread it around this chart which has again a two dimensional world where you have one variable as loan to value ratio so this is an important variable in uh, banking where you say if you have taken a loan of x amount and uh, that loan uh, uh, is which you have taken from the bank uh, say it's a home loan home equity loan where uh, loan to value kind of determines what is the debt percentage of that loan so if you have taken a loan from the bank uh, and the worth like worth of that house let's say is $100000 and out of that $100000 the loan component which the bank is putting in is uh, let's assume is 80 so they are putting 800 or rather 80000 dollars is given to you by the bank and 20000 is coming from your pocket so that's where ltv will become 80 divided by total value of the loan so which is debt divided by total value so it will become 80% so 80% somewhere here if you go and income to income ratio is another ratio which is used in banking so a lot of work in machine learning actually goes in like creating these variables so it's uh, like i mean easy to do machine learning but creativity comes in like how you create these ratios how you create the uh, do the feature engineering uh, second variable that you're looking at is income to installment ratio again what does in income to installment ratio mean let's say your uh, income is $10000 and out of that $10000 your installment the monthly installment that you're going to pay to the bank after you take this loan is say $5000 so $5000 divided by income that comes down to be 50% so you say on this excess you will be on the 50 side on this excess you will be on over here now again i have a question which i kind of asked you in a different way if you remember that example of cherry picking on the cake cake can you see some similarity between that example and this data yes you can so where where will you make the cut where you will get most number of bad borrowers and fewer good borrowers so it's a, it's a different like cherries are not good in this case so where where would you make that cut any suggestions how about that same top quadrant so where you have if you just visually see it like there are a lot of 
bad borrowers in this corner and fewer green or the good borrowers over here. So you kind of make the cut over here. Does it make sense? And I, what I did is I just ran the same algorithm, the one formula which complicated thing which we were looking at. Uh, when I ran the same formula, this is the distinction that it created. The same thing, like boy, boy was cutting the cake. You got your 70% bad borrowers in this quadrant versus 29% good borrowers. And the other side, it's like 36 versus 64. So it's a, like the green world. Now, the idea that you have used using this card could be, could be used for uh, creating a product. When I say product, which means like your uh, spam detector. So in this, in case of a spam detector, these variables will be different. So it will no longer be loan to value ratio and income to installment ratio as we are using in the solution. But variables will be say, uh, how many times a particular word has come in the email. Or it can be say, uh, like, uh, is there an image uh, of a, something in the email? Because typically images are not sent by people. Uh, then like also how the salutation, how people are referring to the person when they're writing to this mail. So all those things kind of come in. And when those percentages are taken in, you'd find a place where like there are most number of spam mails are kind of circling over here, like how uh, good borrowers and bad, bad borrowers are happening. So this kind of brings us to the like the last part, which is like, this is how the decision tree, so this algorithm, which you're seeing in a two dimensional world. Uh, this is what the decision tree representation of the same algorithm is. So you took IR, and you kind of cut it like, I mean, this is the area where there are more bad borrowers than the good borrowers and rest of the place like the, you would find more good borrowers. Same example, like, I mean, which you can relate with the spam as I was telling you about. So this kind of brought us to the place where we started with. Uh, don't get intimidated by products and solution. The ideas behind the scene is the same. Uh, it's the utility which kind of says which what's what's going to become a product and what's going to become a solution. So your creativity, your way of working will not be very different when you're working on a product or a solution. Most of you, if you choose a career in data science, mostly will work on solution because those are very niche areas which companies need consulting work for. Uh, then platform was the place where uh, uh, you create, you do your math. So that's like your, Python and all the other platforms that you were using. Uh, that's not the highlight of your career. Like, I mean, highlight lies in the building product and solutions. Accelerator is another area which is kind of coming in where like solution which you have applied in many places uh, kind of gives you the power to accelerate things. So you can go to a company, say like I've done this project for like 10 banks. Now I can do it for you much faster than uh, the other places because we have a knowledge repository we have created this ideas pool uh, but still like i mean that's like just about say about 40 or 50 percent customization is still required so on top of the uh, accelerator so that still kind of falls into the solution uh, domain rather than the product so these are the four uh, say pillars as we started with of machine learning data science or anything else that you do with data. Now let's open the flow for questions. Veda, if you can help me out with the questions. Great. Uh, so one of the questions which I can see in the chat uh, is uh, how can we make uh, products cheaper? How can we make products cheaper? Oh, no, that's a difficult question that you are getting into <laughs> like a lot of uh, things, which I don't know, like, I mean, product cheaper is like, how, how does a product become cheaper when masses are using it? I mean, that's the way it is. Like, I mean, it's a mass consumption. How is China making products cheaper? Like, I mean, we are kind of getting into a lot of bigger supply demand and that kind of cycle. Or, or it's you have have less of people on your payroll, right? So then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it cheaper. You you develop it cheaper. That's one way. 
but that will never happen product development is an expensive cycle i think like any company that goes on they need to have the same kind of backing as google like to keep pumping in money got it uh cool uh, so i think i'll go back to the the question that we started with can you please tell us on the two to three uh, real projects you're working on using ml uh multiple so i'll give you a few examples uh one is uh so one example i just gave you like that uh, credit scoring borrowers yep. you're trying to understand which borrower will not pay and this borrower can be of different nature it does not need to be a retail borrower it could be a uh, uh, it could be a uh, say uh, your sme sme loans that's also very important corporate loans uh, so that's like one area another one is like related to marketing which is machine learning is used a lot where you're trying to increase so the if you can understand like this is the cost side of the story when i was talking about the pnl uh when you're trying to reduce risk essentially is the cost side of the story you are trying to reduce the losses that the bank is going to make or an organization is going to make revenue side of the story is marketing where you kind of look at the uh, uh you try to identify let's say like we are all sitting over here and i want to sell a product one pen now if i can figure out that like out of these 36 people on this platform right now these three have the highest likelihood to buy the pen if i'm going to sell it to them then you are not going to spend like a lot of time wasting on the remaining say 33 of them you just target go to the targeted uh, client and ca- targeted customer and start selling them things which they need so it's also understanding their needs it's also understanding their psychology it's also understanding their demographic profile psychology so it kind of like you think of it like not like a data science problem but like a human understanding problem using data and these are the kind of problems that i'm working on uh, just to name the two thanks for sharing rubam uh, i i can see some questions on you know transitioning uh, into machine learning so i'll just pick them up one by one but all of them sure. mostly are about so ankita is asking how much industry experience is needed to shift to machine learning can a fresher start into machine learning i i mean my answer to that would be absolutely yes if you have the right uh, understanding with with in terms of coding languages and uh, having the right tools uh, knowledge and usually it's a catch 22 situation where you always need experience to get experience uh, so what helps in this case is um you do projects and you know you get live projects done so there's you can look at any internship platforms that your country currently has and you can uh, you know utilize that or you could do courses like upgrad provides which are essentially a full course of certifications or or uh, executive programs or even masters in machine learning ai where you can where you get everything laid on a platter for you right because you get live projects as a part of this curriculum you get to interact with all all of these speakers so like uh, like of the likes group come, come and tell you so much of industry insights and uh, you also at the end of the pro- the whole course you get to do a capstone project so the all of these things that you do you can put as a part of your of your resume and then you can you know start applying for jobs so we we've, we've seen cases where people doing our machine learning or data science programs have even gotten jobs like seventh month into the program of a 12 month program because they were applying laterally and they were already doing so many projects so that'll be my take on it uh, rupam would you like to add no anything? that's that's absolutely right like either so like there's there's no time to start uh, and uh, just figure out is this the field for you that's the first thing because career is a long term thing it's not something that you want to take a plunge because it's cool everybody is doing it uh, that's the biggest mistake which happens with like i mean it's more like okay like not next 40 years do you see yourself doing this day in day out enjoying yourself so first question that i'll ask you to answer is this one if the answer is yes and i take a dipstick like i mean take a dipstick as medha mentioned like i mean do these projects uh, t- maybe some of the courses which upgrade is uh, putting forward look at them uh, which one suits you the most identify 
maybe you can talk to Meeta and like she'll help you out like with some level of counseling and she'll bring in the right people to help you out with that as well. What's the right course for your skill set and the place where you are. Uh, and then once you've taken a plunge, then don't look back. And that's another thing. So think about it like i mean sometimes things don't work out you, you can always walk out as well like I mean, that, there's nothing wrong like i mean rather than like suffering in a long career it's better to just walk out in the beginning that's like one thing which i feel but like uh, while you are choosing your career think about the, is this the place where you see yourself spending like next 30 years because that's how that's the span of a career great thanks rupam um I think another solution, another question was also revolving around that. There was, I have, a, I have a, an experience of four years in mm -hmm. uh, mainframe development and four years as a full stack developer for for Java. Does it make sense now to add data science experience in the tech stack? Not for the heck of it. It should satisfy your career goal. So, like just adding things to your basket just because they are available will not help. But if but somebody think, is confused that maybe I'm maybe what her underlying or her or his underlying question is, was that maybe I'm I'm sort of stagnated in my role right because that's four years and four years so I'm trying to see if there's something which can uh, last me longer. Oh, okay, okay, that's okay. So that way, if I say like I mean, I think this is the future. Like yeah. I mean, uh, more uh, more than anything else, uh, this is a happening area. Uh, so if you are looking for something which will last, yes, this is not going to be a one of those career. Okay. Like after doing something and then the field cease to exist, mm. uh, this is going to be there or, for a long time. Or another solution could be because you've been in technology for so long, you can look at maybe some of the newer technologies, which say, say cybersecurity, right? Uh, mm. ethical hacking is coming up in a big way. You can look at blockchain, you can look at some other technologies, which are maybe more closer to and building on to what you've done already. So that could be one way to look at it uh, and That's not correct. just restrict yourself to machine learning. That's correct. So like, I mean, kind of adding to your skills. So like understand, no, know thyself. Like, I mean, that's, that's where it starts. Like, I mean, you look at yourself, these are the things which I enjoy doing. And then, uh, yeah, world is your oyster. That's how I put it once you know yourself. Great. Um, so... Paratosh is saying that he, when I have an idea to solve a problem, how should I analyze if I should use one of the machine learning products that you sort of mentioned a lot of them right now, how do I figure out, okay, this one sort of works best for me. Once one, I, once one I identify a problem, now mm -hmm. how, how do I identify which one of the machine learning products do I use? Maybe, uh, maybe in terms of, Either either algorithms or you know which one suit best. I think you will be able to figure out from an industry standpoint what is being used, right? Uh, that is one definitely one of the ways for you to analyze. Uh, you you could be a first mover in solving a problem, right? For the first time, that's when maybe you really will have to uh, try experiment, doing a few of them, and see what gives you optimum results. But otherwise, you may always have that example of that one uh, person in the industry or one company in the industry who's already done, tried, tested it, and you can take that as a starting point and then build on it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Like, I mean, when you're looking at it, uh, there could be multiple ways. That's how people do research. I mean, you kind of build on the shoulder of giants. I mean, that's what Newton was doing when uh, he was doing his research. He was developing ideas using Galileo. And that's that's how we all learn. So you kind of look around what people are doing, what sort of things they are doing. Internet is a great place to do that like i mean you can do searches and uh, you find a lot of answers so it's a very happening community very active community and it's all on the internet so it's unlike like i mean the old days where you go and read books a lot of things are happening online that's one way upgrade has like uh, their own uh, uh, ways they like i mean they'll recommend like, I mean, things will happen like i mean there are like standard solutions and third thing is like, I mean, struggle. Like, I mean, that's that's the best way to learn. Like, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like no solution will just come to you uh, just like that. So there's a period of like, say, trying out things, failing, 
trying more experiments failing and then like one fine day okay now it's working so that has happened to me multiple times and i can tell you from experience that's that's the best way to learn uh great uh so we have reached a uh, time but i will rupam if you're around we can just take two two three more questions that are there mm-hmm. and uh, one of them is uh, uh, again a question from paritosh in terms of are there any open source platforms to practice machine learning solutions so google collabs is one thing which i suggested that's like you can just go and like python and everything is waiting for you you just do your coding so that's one platform you can use right away great it's free cool. i hope you have your answer uh, paritosh there's one anonymous question when it comes to decision making capabilities how challenging will it be to differentiate boundaries that exist between human intelligence and machine learning at the core of its discretion oh. okay so this is this is a this is like a, an existential okay. question which is around for a long time at what time we like a machines and us like there's no distinction they are they a uh, lot of movies are being made about it i don't think we have reached that place just yet like still like machines are just great calculators and we have our place on the planet uh, decision making is also the same so it's it's kind of like it's not like machines are making all the decisions or humans are making all the decisions yeah. it's kind of like a collaboration to so think of it like a collaboration rather than a versus b it's more a and b together right I, that, that this question reminded me of oh mathematics is actually applied philosophy and then the whole uh, you know argument between the the overlap of of philosophy and, oh, and philosophy is Burton, Russell, decision making sciences yeah. and yeah so if you see all the philosophers who are like burton russells and all those like i mean they were all philosophers but they were doing like deep set theory and mathematics at the end of it all. so that's true like good thing you brought up that point okay let me just uh, okay sorry i think i just launched the the rug pull okay i request all of you to just uh, uh, very quickly help us understand how you found today's session while i just take one more question and you know if you would like to attend future sessions with us very quickly to help you all you can definitely visit upgrad.com and look at have a look at any courses that you think would be suitable for your needs as we know that for you to transition into the career of your choice having the right guidance will make a lot of sense so do write to us at admissions@upgrad.com at and you will definitely be be guided well so all of those uh, people who asked questions today okay will does this make sense for me i think one was ankit and another was an anonymous question do do feel free to write to us at admissions@agra.com and uh, you would be guided by our admissions counselors and uh, the experts that we have in house okay will there be any hands on session paratosh we would uh, we're trying to get that done but that it's very difficult to have it in in an hour's time that because we usually follow an hour long format so whenever whenever folks like you have the, the three hours that are needed to have a hands on session we would definitely like to conduct it um suman is asking in your view what is more valuable a platform or a solution uh hard to say hard right, to say like a right yeah. platform to get the right solution <laughs> <laughs> oh are you asking what is more important platform or a solution or product or a solution Okay, that his question is platform or solution the platform is calculator calculator is never important <laughs> is the is the solution so you have your answer <laughs> there uh okay and thanks for all of you who who voted just i can see some people who still haven't very quickly just there's just two two questions and i hope you can see the live results through uh a lot of folks agree that they th- this was a lot above their expectations and they learned a lot of new concepts so thank you so much for that thank you so much. and thanks to all of you who stuck till the end of the session uh, do write to us at admissions@upgrad.com to tell us that you attended this session and you would be eligible for a special discount and uh, so this is something i keep till the end of the session so that you know people uh, for, for the ones who really uh, stuck around and attended the entire week so do write that you did attend this session and uh, you would be guided and 
we would be engaged, keep you engaged with the following insights for the Upgrad series that we have. It's happening this entire week. So feel free to attend all the other sessions as well. Fantastic. So thank you so much. Thanks all of you. Thanks, Medha. Like uh, I had a good time. Like so, hope uh, to see you all sometime soon. Absolutely. Look forward to having another session with you, uh, Rupam. And thank you, everybody. Have a good evening and a good day. Thank you. Thanks.